Hello, I'm David Hoffman and welcome to the show. This is the first episode in a new series all about assembly language programming using Microchip's PIC line of microcontrollers. And in this series, we'll be using Microchip's free integrated development environment, MP Lab, to do all of the coding. Now, I'll be covering everything from simple coding exercises to more advanced assembly topics later in the series. Though this series is for the beginner, advanced users are welcome to participate as well. I'll be using Neolog's Mini 28 Breadboard Design Aid in this series, but you can follow along with any 16F882 compatible microcontroller, a breadboard, and a few electronic parts. Okay, so in this episode we'll start off with getting a single LED to blink and add code to control the blink rate as well. We'll also expand on this later in the episode. For this episode you'll need a PIC kit 2 or 3, MPLAB IDE, 8 390 ohm resistors, 8 LEDs, color isn't important so use whatever you have on hand, the data sheet for the PIC 16F882, which can be downloaded from microchip.com, a PIC 16F882 or a Neoloc Mini 28A, which can be purchased from neoloc.com, a breadboard, and a bit of wire. Okay. To begin, let's plug in the Mini 28 into the breadboard. Now since we are only going to be using one side of the Mini 28A, you only need to plug in the side where the PIC kit plugs into. Like this. To begin, connect a black wire from ground to the Mini 28A. Insert a 390 ohm resistor into the breadboard so it runs across the center divider. Next, plug in the LED's anode, the longer lead, into the same column as the resistor and the LED's cathode into ground. Now, connect your PIC kit 2 or 3 to the computer and then plug it into the Mini 28A. For this part of the lesson, we'll be using the PIC kit to power the project. However, for the second part of this lesson, we'll need to hook up an external 5 volt power source. Now that all the hardware components are ready, it's time to start MP Lab. Since this is our first lesson together, I'll cover the steps required to create a project using the Project Wizard. So to begin, you go to the Project menu, select Project Wizard from the drop-down, click Next. The first thing we'll do is select the processor that we're going to be using for this project. So you find Pick 16F882 from the drop-down list and select that and click next. Next we're going to select the assembler we'll be using. So now we're going to actually select the project name and the directory that we're going to save it in. So I've already got mine set up here as you can see. So we'll do a test. So create a new directory and I'll just say test R. And we'll select that and we'll click save and then click next. Now we're going to add the files that we'll be using for the uh, project and at this point you're really just going to be adding template files um, as well as some others. I've copied my files over to the directory where I do most of my coding so that they're real easy to find and they're right here in this templates folder. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to find 16F882 linker. And we're going to add that and then you'll need to add the 882 template file and we are also going to add the 16F882 include file. Now we've got those three files ready to go. We'll click next. Click finish. It'll ask you for a directory to save it in. It should be in the same directory where you set up the project. Click Save. And we're all ready to go here. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is take our template file and open that up. Let me size that so we can see everything. And then we're going to go File. Save As. 
work your way to the directory where you uh, save the project and go ahead and rename that and we'll call this one LED blinking on ASM save that remove the template file from your project we're not going to be working with that file and then we click add file we're in the right directory we select the file we just saved and now we're set up to start working with this file now there's a lot of information in this template file so first thing we're going to do is come in here and kind of clean out the stuff we don't need and we'll start at the top here. We don't need this first section, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that. We don't need to see the features of the processor, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. Um, probably want to keep the rest of this header information here. Leave this section right here alone. We don't need variable definitions here, so we can get rid of that. Um, you might want to go ahead and leave these, these two sections in here for reference. Uh, we'll, we'll be coming back up here modifying uh, these to work with our specific code. This isn't a bad idea to leave here as well in case you decide down the road to use the, uh, the non-volatile memory. There's no need to change anything here. We're not going to be messing with the interrupt vector stuff. So we can go ahead and get rid of that as well. Uh, okay. We're not going to need any of this code down here at the bottom. So we can go ahead and get rid of that too. Now leave the end statement down here because the uh, compiler actually needs that to uh, properly compile the program. So we always have to have that end statement at the end of our code. All right, now we've got things cleaned up here a little bit, and I want to change things around. Um, I'm going to actually get rid of this main program code declaration there. We're going to put in we start there, and we're also going to add main, which will be in our main program. So the first thing we're going to start doing here is configuring our, our microcontroller to operate the way we want to. And there's some things we have to now. Our start code we, we actually are actually going to have to specify where we want that app. And I usually put in uh, just the org and then the address. And this tells the uh, compiler that this particular block of code will always start at this address. And that prevents conflicts with our reset uh, vector block of code. So the next thing we need to do is type in bank select and this tells the compiler to put in code that will change the active bank of memory uh, that we're using to the bank where port A is contained. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use the clear F command to clear port A to make sure that it is um, all zeros. And that's what now the next thing we need to do is set the Ansel register so that port A is in digital mode and not analog mode. So we'll go ahead and clear Ansel. And the next thing we need to do is set up our port A port, port A bits as output. So we'll go ahead and take care of that now. Okay, that takes care of our config part of our code. Now we can go up here change our header right there. And we'll go ahead and copy this header. We're all set to go there. Now we've got main set up and I yeah I know I, I use the, the word main always for my main root routine just from my uh, C programming days. Okay so the first thing we've got to do here is add code to turn the LED on and to turn the LED off. Bank select port A bit clear F port A comma zero. Now this actually turns the port A bit zero off. And then we can say bit set F port A comma zero. And then go to main. Now 
I can tell you right off the bat we're going to have a problem here. Well, let's go ahead and compile. And now that we're ready to actually program, we need to come up to Programmer, select PickKit 2. MPLab will then connect to the PickKit. And we can go ahead and program the target device. Make sure MClear is up. Okay, as you can see, the LED is turning on and off so fast that we can't see it. So we, we need to put in some routines to slow things down here. So what we'll do is create a, a routine. We'll call it LED pause. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to create two loops. The first loop will always cycle completely through. We won't have much control over that though we could add control later on if we so desire. The second loop will be specified by this command here, which is moving the literal value of FF into the working register. And then we're going to move that value into LED loop 2. At this point we need to go ahead and define our variables. Now we're going to come back up to the variable declaration area and we're going to change this to LED var for, for variable, get rid of that. Probably want to get rid of this comment here so that it's not confusing things, and we can get rid of this comment too. Now we're using the udata underscore share area because this will automatically put our variable definitions into the shared memory on the microcontroller. We'll be able to access these registers from any bank. So we're going to go ahead and create a variable name and we're going to call one LED loop. I'm going to say reserve one. And then we're going to do LED loop two, reserve one. Now what this does is it tells the compiler that I'm going to use two registers and I'm going to reference these re registers in my code using these two labels. So let's go ahead and go back down here to the code. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up our loop here. So we're moving the value FF into LED loop 2, which is going to be our high byte in the loop we're about to write. And we're going to go ahead and create another one. We'll call it LED pause 2. And we need to clear F LED loop. And then we're going to decrement F's and skip of zero. LED loop F. I'm going to go to. Now this is the first loop. I'll go over real quickly what we're doing here. First thing we're doing, we're clearing the loop to make sure that it is in fact zero. We're going to decrement the loop by one and store that result back into LED loop. This is what the F on the end does. Now the go to dollar sign minus one is going to jump us right back up to this decrement F skip of zero command so that we can keep processing and reducing the value in the LED loop register. When the LED loop register reaches zero, we're going to skip this command and we'll go to the next decrement F skip of zero. LED loop 2. Now at this point we want to tell our routine to go back to here and start the whole process over again. And once we're done we'll return from the loop. Now we can come back up here to our main program and we can say okay Clear port A and then kill some time with LED pause. Then we're going to set port A bit 0 and we'll do the same thing. Now let's go ahead and compile the code. Okay, I got an error when I compiled the code. Let me go ahead and bring it up here so you can see it. And what it's telling me is that symbol not previously defined LED loop 2. And I can see right now I've got one too many O's on there. So I can just double click on that um, error and it will take me right to where the error is in the code. 
and I can remove one of my O's there. We can compile again, and this time everything's good. Let's go ahead and reprogram the pick and see what happens. Bring M clear high, and now our LED is blinking like we want. Okay, I'm going to go ahead at this point and add a external power source to the breadboard so that I can um, add some more LEDs in here. Okay, now that that's done, let's go ahead and test all our LEDs out. And what we're going to do is replace some commands here. So I'm going to say clear W, loop WF, port A. We're going to delete our bit clear F, port A. We're going to delete our bit set F, port A. And then we're going to type in complement F port A F. Now the complement F uh, port A F is just going to invert whatever's there. And since it's clear, it's going to turn everything on. So we'll go ahead and compile this, program our chip, turn M clear on, and all the LEDs should be blinking now. And I can see that one isn't. It looks like I've got a wiring problem. So let me go ahead and fix that real quick. So what I'm going to do now is create another variable and we'll call this LED count and then we're going to come down here basically get rid of that code there and come up here let's get rid of that there and we'll say increment F LED count F. Move F LED count W. This is the command you use to copy the contents of a register into the working register. Then we move the contents of W into port A. So we'll go ahead and compile the code, program the uh, microcontroller, bring M clear high, and now we have a binary counter. And you notice that the counter didn't start at precisely zero. That's because we didn't clear it. Now if we come back up here to our start area and we add the command clear F LED count, recompile the program, program, and bring M clear high. Now whenever we start the counter, it will always start at zero. That wraps up this episode, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me or post them in the comments section of this video. Clicking the subscribe button will notify you when new episodes are posted to my channel. And if you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And thanks for watching.